Hello, my delicious viewers. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. So, we had just left New Winchester. Provisioning. Before you leave New Winchester, it may be prudent to buy more supplies. You can buy them at the Victoria Market to visit the market selected from the menu that appears on the left of the main panel. So, yeah, we're probably going to want to get more supplies. At least uh, some more fuel. So let's go ahead and see about that. Alright. Shops. Let's go to the Victoria Market. Um... Right now we have 186 sovereigns. You can see that in the top left-hand corner, right below buying. Probably four and five right now. We're almost out of our other level of supplies. We'll hold on to this for now. Um, kind of go off here. So, we might be able to get some more information regarding some of our prospects. Let's see what we've got here. Perhaps not. Oh, let's see. Well, basically just telling us to do what we were going to do, so it's not too bad. East, northeast. Okay. Well, we'll have to figure out exactly what we want to do with... All this as far as directionality is concerned. Huh. I think it said southeast was for uh, Magdalens. Let's just kind of shove off and see what happens. <laughs> Often not the best plan in the skies. Just shove off and see what happens. Another ship over there. I'm gonna probably get into all these fights. These guys actually aren't uh, hostile until you start a fight with them. Let's try it. Oof. And we hit the rocks. Come on. I'm gonna take a couple more shots. There we go. Okay, so we can scrap and scuttle the burning vessel to get our health back, but this point, I'd rather uh, seize its cargo. Tackities often carry natural resources they have hewn, farmed, or mined from the reach. Links of bronze wood, vessels of sticky. Chorister? Chorus? Chorister? I think it's Chorister. Chorister Necker farmed. Uh, yeah. Either way, sacks of boisterous seeds, barrels of ours, freshly dug from some nameless sky rock. What did this one have? This has one bronze wood, which I believe we can trade for a decent amount. Yeah. I'm going to mostly be attacking those Tackety Scouts whenever I see them. <coughs> this is a game where the menu and maps and all that get checked pretty frequently. I believe this is a Marauder, so we'll actually uh, get into a, a real fight here. You do have to worry about a heat gauge, so I'll try and manage that as we're going. And we leveled up. Board the defeated Marauder. The crew of the Marauder lies dead in the corridor, killed not by your guns, but knives and small arms fire. The only survivor is the captain, locked in the brig with a bottle of brandy. 
chalk eyes stare back from every wall. When he ran out of chalk, he began scraping them in his fingernails, little remains of them but bloodied stumps. Seen this before, Captain, says a crew member, grasping your arm. Sky madness. Magdalens can treat it, if you can be bothered to take the poor sod. Mm. Sure, why not? The high wilderness is cruel. This could easily be you one day. The crew wrap up the sky-maddened captain in blankets, then secure them tightly with belts. It takes four to transport him safely to your locomotive. He might not be happy restrained, but it should keep him from harm until you get him to Magdalene's. Magdalene lies to the southeast of New Winchester. The captain secured. You have a moment to see whether anything of worth on his lo locomotive before abandoning it to the wilderness. Uh, we have a tale of terror, which we do need for our ambition. Uh, let's loot the hold. A distressingly odored barrel. Ah, you pry the lid off. Dear God, what the blazes. Your navigator pokes the thing inside with a big stick until assured that it's dead. You now have one uncanny specimen. And we did level up, so let's uh, go to our facets. Experience, you can earn more experience by defeating enemies, discovering landmarks, and completing prospects and stories. So, let's do this. Looks like there's 20, 20 levels to do, but uh, let's take a facet. And these are used to uh, either gain materials or increase your stats. Most of the time we will be increasing our stats. Uh, let's see. Like on this one, for instance, you can get uh, Otherworldly Artifact or you can get a Moment of Inspiration. So, uh, yeah. Right now, we've got an emphasis on irons and veils. Uh, so we'll probably want to complement our other skills or start increasing our other abilities so we can be kind of a jack-of-trades. Um, I think I'd rather focus on irons and veils. So let's see if we have any options for iron and veils. We do. A spell in prison. Let's do that. The judge, stony-faced, condemned you to New Newgate, a stalactite prison of New of Old London. Not New London, you fool. Alright. It was... Uh, its dark was thick as tar. Its cells were small as pantries. How did you spend your days there? Better the wolf than the lamb. You, rolled, you ruled your corridor like a robber king. Even the guards knew better than to push you. Your punishments were less than you deserved. So now we've got a 22 in veils and a 28 in irons. And those can get in the hundreds, from what I understand. So don't think uh, don't think us are you know as being hot shit for being in the mid 20s. Anytime you see these watchtowers, I believe you can also get experience by discovering them. Yeah. These are the borders of the Queen's March, first step in the long journey to Albion. Right now we're just kind of going around. We could send out our scout to try and figure out where some stuff is. Break! Uh, looks like there's actually a wreckage or something over here. I don't tend to like... Uh, you know, dealing with uh, backtracking and whatnot, but sometimes it's worth it. Let's turn on cruise control. A stopped clock. The fastidious inspector approaches you in the galley. Captain, good day. I noticed your ship's clock has stopped. Perhaps you'd permit me to, be me to repair it. She has a little case of tools and a hopeful expression. Permit it. I prefer things to be right more than twice a day. An opportunity for conversation. She gives a grateful flicker of a smile and sets to work. Soon she has the back of the clock and has spread or back off the clock and has spread tiny cogs across the galley table. Obscure horological tools gleam brazily among them. Everything has a place. Brassily. Brassily, not brazily. <coughs> I appreciate the opportunity to keep myself busy. Staring too long at the stars is harmful to the temperament. 
The fastidious inspector has a round face, browned eyes, and short, dark hair. She gives the impression of being perpetually busy. Uh, inquire, discuss the reach, or compliment her skills. Let's compliment her skills. Her hands are deft and sure. She polishes, she cleans, she reassembles. Thank you, she says with a small, embarrassed silence. It's possible the inspector is pleased. It's rather hard to tell. Uh, inquire about her work. What are the duties of an agent of the horological office? <laughs> she sniffs. It is of fundamental importance that 10 o'clock on the 2nd of June in one corner of the Empire occurs at the same time as 10 o'clock on the 2nd June of June in the opposite corner. How is an Empire to function if it can't agree what day it is? Unfortunately, the process is complicated by the fact that time is less reliable than it was. The hours train, or the hours trade has seen to that. Uh, ask about the hours trade. You've heard the Empress award her favorites with gifts of years to extend their lives, and that you can become rich, mining for hours to satisfy London's hunger for them. Oh, hours have more uses than that. We use them to increase the efficiency of work worlds, to speed journeys to distant regions, to resolve overcrowding in prisons. That's implying that you speed along their life till they die? It's pretty... pretty grim. It does make my life more difficult, when time knots and stretches like wool on the loom. More difficult, but more vital. Her Majesty seized a great trove of them when she assumed the throne of ours. And now, even more than has been found in the Reach. Miners dig them from the ground. She looks momentarily wistful. I hope, someday, to retire with a modest pension of years myself. To prolong the better part of my retirement. Uh, let's discuss the Reach. The wide, wild frontier. A sunless domain, but impossibly verdant. With gargantuan vines, cathedral-sized bronze woods, and livid fungal archipelagos far from home it has an uncouth splendor but I miss Albion and the steady light of the clockwork sun these sunless reaches are so misty and quiet she pauses but critical the territories here are rich with raw hours and enough vegetation grows on them to feed the whole of London even if some of it is of a dubious shape uh, let's discuss suns. What happened to the Reach's suns? And London has a man-made sun. How did Her Majesty defeat the Old One? We warred, and we won. It's not my area of expertise. I'm afraid. The suns made the law, they say. Now Her Majesty makes it. As for the Reach's sun, she looks through the window at the lightless, stirring mists. I don't know. Do suns grow old? Do they die of natural causes? I think that would probably be better than the alternative, wouldn't it? And... Let's just bid her a good evening. We've got work to do. And to you, Captain. I think I shall make a cup of tea. Right, where is this thing? There it is. The Vigs. Ooh, that is not a good chance. The wreck gleams with frost. Its windows are dark, its engines silent. Perhaps something of value lies within. Yeah, I'm not gonna do the uh I'm not gonna do that. Let's let's just get the get the repairs. There we go. Back up to full health full health. Engineers don sky suits and retrieve the salvageable plating, using it to patch the worst of your locomotive's damage. And that's it. A lot of the time you'll only have the one choice. Which is fine for us. I like how the bits that were floating around the wreckage uh, can kind of get carried along with us and then deposited elsewhere. It's a neat touch. So yeah, as was mentioned before, you can send your scout out to potentially find new ports and whatnot, but... Uh, I'm going to try and avoid that. Bonk. 
wasn't exactly what I intended to happen as far as that encounter was concerned, but hey, it worked out. Did some real significant damage there. <laughs> Got three quick bursts by getting in close. Alright, you prepare to board the buckled wreckage poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. Probably not going to read those anymore. Um, oh, explore the captain's cabin. That's a 100% chance. I feel like we have to pick a 100% chance. The marauders are democratic. The captain rules by strength and claims the best for their own keep. Seek unusual items. I mean, the sovereigns would be nice, but I don't know how many we'd get. It could be like two. Let's uh, pick this. The cabin door did not survive the onset of your guns, nor did the captain. You have to tread carefully. The captain will not. Or the carpet will not be saved. A few scorched documents sit on the bronzewood desk. They make for interesting reading. Apparently, London had need of a few brave captains willing to bring fire to the tacketies. You would not have expected the signatories of the order. We now have one Salon Stewed Gossip. And that might be sellable. That might be used in an event. Either way, it'll probably be worth more than the... Uh, more than the... The Sovereigns we would have claimed from the safe, so... I have to at least assume that it's better. Otherwise, what was the freaking point, man? Oh, also, we don't really have ammo. Uh, Isambard line was wasn't once meant to pass this way. An incomplete accelerator rail rusts here. Hmm. Interesting. So right now we're we're just kind of looking for. Magdalens. Once we have an idea of where extra ports are, then we'll be able to try and make some more progress. It's an ominous sounding place, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Pollen scent permeates the bridge, fierce as blooming lilies. Ooh, what is this? Lauren Scott House. A new port. That helps with our terror, too. Very nice. Oh, Titania. Very neat. Titania is cupped in the petals of a colossal orchid, heady with scent, lurid with color. An enclave of bohemians have made it their home, seeking inspiration in the wilderness and the wildness of the reach. Uh, recruit the Rat Brigade? Yo. I gotta see what's up with the Rat Brigade. Oi! Down here! Three rats glower up at you. They're wearing tattered military uniforms and carry rusted derringers. They're polite enough to point them elsewhere. Officers require a sign-on fee. Invite them to board your locomotive. Many hands make light work. This will get you chief engineers who will increase your veils by six, iron by two, and affiliation villainy by one. I mean, that's already what we got. What's, uh... Oh, they want a hundred, huh? Hmm... They want a hundred. It's not super great. Uh, they've got bronze wood as a bargain. No prospects. Uh, if I had enough, I might buy some, but uh, I don't. Oops. Dock again. Let's see. The Sapphire Souk. Here, a captain can stock up on the essentials. There's never any shortage of chorister nectar? Chorister? 
I don't know if it's Corister or not. Uh, we're going to get one more fuel and one more supply. Hmm, nothing to sell. Alright. Well, let's check back the square again. Uh, Oberon's Landing. Port unfurls itself, welcoming you ashore. Well, of course, we're going to need a port report. Port reports are a very important thing to get. You get uh, money and things like that for uh, bringing them back to, uh, you know, head ports and stuff like that. So, yeah. The port unfurls itself, welcoming you ashore. The perfumed haven, or this perf perfumed haven, has was intended for thinkers, artists, philosophers, and poets. Instead, you enter its main dome to find yourself surrounded by arguing bohemians and the unfinished shelves of buildings in a variety of styles. Nobody looks happy, but everyone agrees it's someone else's fault. It's, uh, it's a telling us here. Oh, discovering ports. Got it. Uh, write a port report. Such beauty. Such a pity about the nearby Chorister Hive? Chorister? I, I don't know what the correct pronunciation for that is. What is Titania? A question with no easy answer. To the poets, a place of inspiration. To the stoneworkers, an untouched slab. To the playwrights, a blank page. A place of tranquility, of creation. And, your interviewee pauses, suddenly looking worried. Do you hear buzzing? Apologies. Must get inside. You can't see or hear anything, however, and must assume it's just a force of habit. Okay, to earn rewards, hand your report re reports to the Indurate Veteran or the Prudent Secretary. They are normally found at Victory Hall and Company House docks near Winchester. However, they can move as the war in the Reach progresses. Okay. Uh, I guess we can meet with the mayor. It's first amongst founders, she gets Titania's only office. The mayor is only available and the port is undamaged. Okay. Titania's petals fill the air with a perpetual perfume, but eventually you become accustomed to it. Even so, the scent of this many flowers in the mayor's small office sends your senses reeling. Uh, obviously unaffected, she sits behind her desk and gestures you to take the other chair. Uh, let's ask about work in the port. <gasps> Excuse me. Uh, even a place like this must want for something. A polite refusal. The rathspotic uh, mayor shakes her head. I think you will find us most self-sufficient, Captain. Enjoy your visit. Take in some poetry. If I think of anything that we might require, you will be the first to know. Hmm. Well, thanks. Uh, ask about Titania. Flower of the High Wilderness. A spectacular place, isn't it? We couldn't believe that nobody else had colonized it after, well, whomever built all the crystal domes and spires. Honestly, I can't believe our luck. Hmm. Return to the main square. Okay. Guess let's explore a little bit. Jewel of the Reach. Light sparkles throughout the jeweled petals onto the marbled white paths. Wherever you explore, poets and singers perform their latest work, while artists peer behind canvases to try to capture the beauty in oil and chalk. In the horrors of the high wilderness, this place is of safety and wonder where nothing could possibly disturb the peace. Hmm. But what is that buzzing in the distance? Return to Titiano, or Titania to later to see how it's faring. Oh god, they are going to get destroyed! Uh, something tells me we should probably recruit the Rat Brigade sooner than later. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, so this is basically east of New Winchester, so we probably have to go to around here, I'm thinking. Yeah. Always happy to get more experience. The 
Yeah, I would imagine that there's some enemies around here somewhere. Alright, so we're pretty much going to try and go as south as possible. We're going to have to double back here, I would imagine. Because uh, I think we're going to... Yeah, we're going to hit a dead end here. I guess it kind of depends on how long this chunk of land is. Apparently it's very long. I try to keep at least some land in view, <laughs> otherwise you can get a little confused. The background art is absolutely wonderful. We are quickly running out of supplies. Unfortunately, this has kind of led to big, big run around, but it's okay. As you can see, we are at least getting some experience by going our little, our little way here. Wouldn't you know it, a wreckage. The Nolan's Comet. The wreck gleams with frost again. I'm not going to take a 44% chance. Let's, uh, let's mourn the dead. Simple ceremony, doffed caps, a few words, a gloomy silence, but it helps. The only decency in the skies is that we bring our, er, yeah, is that we bring ourselves. Your terror has fallen. Terror has actually fallen a pretty decent amount from doing that, too. We didn't get anything from the wreckage other than that, but... Better that than blow up our engine. Yeah, those types of events, a lot of the time they lead to uh, losing crew members, losing supplies, losing HP, which is probably the easiest thing to uh, recover from, if I'm being honest. Hmm. Well, found some valuables. Oh, nice. We got one supply. Heck yeah. Whatever we had found probably would have turned into supplies anyway, so I'm glad to have it. Ah, let's send our scout out. See what they can find. Scout returns. What has it found? Oh, it found a port. We gotta go visit the port. We're slowly but surely getting further and further away from where we had originally planned on going, but... What's the point of a game of exploration if you do not explore? You know me to be right. Lots of these little archways here. our terror taken care of. Oh, nice. This is a uh, lead beater and stain rod. Nice, nice. Lead beater and stain rod is an elderly London company, the custodians of the Emperor's first supernal natural reserve, or nature reserves. To find work with them, head for capabilities cabins. You'd rather enjoy the reserve. Seek the gateway of Albert's Idol. This concrete bay is for loading and unloading locomotives. It disappoints tourists who expect to revive, or arrive at scenic waterside. It mainly caters to the workers of the Leadbeater and Stainrod Company, who come to collect goods from the laboratories here. Cable cars link to the main reserve below and the scientific base at Capabilities Inquest. Port report, of course. Leadbeater and St. Rod Nature Reserve is a national park maintained at great expense by the company. 
Scores of researchers come here to study the nature of the Reach. Many visitors come here, too, for a pleasant holiday. Very nice. Converse with the fellow captains. What brings them out this way? For a few, it's the work provided by Leadbeater and Stainrod. For the rest, the reason is the same. They're drawn in by the beauty of the reserve. Some are here with tourists from across the Empire. Others are here to give their crews a respite. Others were simply passing by and couldn't resist popping in. Or stopping in. That was us. We couldn't resist. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's check out the bazaar first, of course. Uh, they do have... Um, some pending prospects. We don't have any, uh, any of the seasoned or unseasoned hours, but we can purchase them here, which is kind of funny. Um, this happens on occasion where they are requesting things, but also selling them. Um, it would be in our best interest to take advantage of that if possible. So we are actually going to sell a piece of fuel in order to get enough to do this. One will be enough to get us started. And then we can buy the rest of these and sell them. And there you go. We are at 356. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. Uh, in 30 days, they redo their bargains and whatnot, so... It's not going to be the same bargain. Chances are. So, we'll have to be a little careful of that. Uh, they do have sacks of verdant seeds, which we do need. I think we need three of them, at least. Um, so we will go ahead and buy those. And as the tooltip on the top left is staying, uh, saying on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that we are 10 out of 12 for our uh, various amounts of space. Um, I am going to go ahead and purchase two fuel. That's fine. Uh, what do we got here? Let's go to the capabilities inquest. A clump of cabins used by Leadbeater and Stainrod's researchers as they plumb and catalog the secrets of the reserve. Enterprising captains may find work for the company here. Base of research. You researchers of the reserve have a number of laboratories scattered among the tourist cabins. From here, they study the mysteries of the Reach. Read the request to all park-goers. A researcher of the reserve has pinned up a call for aid. We want to study the powerful forces of nature at work in the Reach, so that we may improve the life of all citizens of the Empire. If you are an intrepid sort willing to aid our efforts, we are offering a reward for the following. I see you're interested. The phlegmatic researcher has wheeled up behind you. His left leg is raised, perhaps, to produce the very obvious swelling. The keys to understanding the remarkable principles of growth and cultivation are waiting here. We just need suitable specimens. If you aid our research, I'll ensure you're properly remunerated. Uh, rem remunerated. Rem remunerated. We mean you read anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, so got a research list. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I guess let's take a look at the research list. The phlegmatic researcher is studying the mysteries of the Reach. What can you bring to aid him? Okay, he needs one of the following requests. Of course, he's happy to reward you if you bring back more. Experiments sanctioned by the company. Experiments sanctioned by the company. Experiments experiment sanctioned by the company. Uh, let's see. It's requested that he be brought the wings of the uh, chorister bee. Be brought ants. And be brought uh, hybris pus. I don't know where these bees are, but I feel like they're close by. Okay. Turn in 15 days. So I assume that's after we give it to him. Then we can come back and see. We seek the wings of the chorister beetle. What is it that makes them sing when their smaller sisters only buzz? Hmm. 
Given the reports of ants circling those soon to die, we consider the creatures apt for study. Interesting. I haven't seen any ants yet, so... Same with a hybris. I have no idea what that is. May hold properties either beneficial or detrimental to the human frame. We intend to find out. Very interesting. Uh, was that all we could do here? Oh, we could turn in our research. Uh, inquire into the phlegmatic researcher's current course of study. What mysteries is he delving into? Currently, I'm making a study of the orderliness of the Reach. It may be untamed, but a firm logic has guided its growth. I wish to better understand this principle. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Albert's Idol. The lead beater and stain rod nature reserve is an immense, untrodden hither or hinterland of the Reach's unreasonably fecund flora and fauna. It is popular with London's more outdoorsy tourists. Into the reserve. The park is filled with birds and flowers, trees and woodland creatures, streams and bumbling insects, and other insidious dangers. Hmm. Visitors are not allowed to venture too deeply into the reserve without an escort. Arrange for a guide. Tour guides are essential in this place. Park guides are forbidden from entering the deeper sections of the reserve alone. Hmm. Poor park guests. The only person available to help is a romantic ornithologist. He is lean and plainly dressed with a long, whirly beard. A wiry, wiry, wiry beard. The other researchers introduce you. Did you know our colleague here, one indicates to the ornithologist, is looking for a mythical bird whose beak peck peck pecks away at the mountain of eternity? They stifle giggles. The ornithologist maintains his smile and gestures towards the forest path. I'll be glad to show you the reserve. I hope you'll join me later. You can often find me at the Watchtower. Hmm. Um, what do we got here? So that's for the tour. And then if we can just go visit the ornithologist as well. Let's just go visit the ornithologist. He nods hello as you enter. Welcome. Tea? Uh, sure. Ask about the bird. He's researching a mythical bird. What is it and why? There are other birds I could study, of course, he says, shruggingly, but that's not the point. We had thought this bird a myth, the bird who wears away at the mother of mountains, pebble by pebble, but miners have seen it. The heavens are home to improbable things. Interesting. All right. Uh, I think that's really all we can do here. Let's uh, close this up and undock and get on out of here. Alright, so we gotta go... We gotta go south. Like, uh, we uh, we definitely went a little off course here. Um, yeah, I'm thinking we gotta go, like, probably around here. But, uh, anyway, that's gonna do it for that episode. If you guys liked it, feel free to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and all that jazz. I hope you guys are liking the series so far. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. It's fun to read. A little, little hard on the throat to, uh, to read it all, but, uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's a pretty good time. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye